Now, for our last topic, research paradigms are also called philosophical perspectives. It is also called philosophical epochs. It is also called research programs. It is also called research theory. And sometimes it is called the isms. So research paradigm is the overall effect of the acceptance of a particular general theoretical approach and the influence it has on the scientist's view of the world. Normal scientific activity is carried out within the terms of the paradigm. A paradigm is a framework of thought or beliefs by which you interpret reality. There are two main paradigms that form the basis of research in the natural and social sciences. Remember the table. We have here the natural science and on the other side we have the social science. Under natural science we have physical and life science. The critical question that divides the two, the natural and the social science, is whether the methodology of the physical science can be applied to study social phenomena. The paradigm that is rooted in physical sciences is called systematic, scientific, or positivist approach. Systematic, scientific, and positivistic approach. The opposite paradigm has come to be known as which is used in social sciences, something qualitative, ethnographic, ecological, and naturalistic, which is a sort of misnomer because of this natural. The advocates of two opposing sides have developed their own values, their own terminology, their methods and techniques to understand social phenomena. Positivism. Let's begin with positivism. Positivism assumes that Reality exists independently of humans. The positivist approach to scientific investigation in, is based on acceptance as the fact that the world around us is real and that we can find out about these realities. The assumption is the world around us is real. It is not mediated by our senses and it is governed by immutable laws. The ontological position of positivist is that of realism. Positivists strive to understand the social world like the natural world. In nature, there is a cause and effect relationship between phenomena, and once established, they can be predicted with certainty in the future. For positivists, the same applies to the social world, because reality is context-free. Different researchers working in different times and places will converge to the same conclusions about a given phenomenon. On the other extreme, we have constructivism. Constructivism goes by various names, like it is also called interpretivism. It is also called constructionism. It is also called relativism. And for lack of a better word, sometimes it is also called idealism, which is in conflict with the branch of philosophy which is materialism and idealism. Interpretivism rejects the notion that a single, verifiable reality exists independent of our senses. It maintains that the view of the world that we see around us is the creation of the mind. This does not mean that the world is not real, but rather that we can only experience it personally through our perceptions which are influenced by our preconceptions, beliefs, and values. We are not neutral, detached observers, but part of society. Aside from concentrating on the search for constants in human behavior, which highlights the repetitive, predictable, and invariant aspect of society, the researcher does not ignore what is subjective, individual, and creative. For constructivist or interpretivist, truth and reality are always mediated by our senses. Because truth and reality are created, not discovered, it is not then possible to know reality 
as it is. The ontological position is anti-foundationalist. It means it refuses to adopt any permanent and varying or foundational standards by which truth can be universally known. Instead, interpretivists believe in socially constructed multiple realities. The epistemological position of positivists is that of objectivism and reductionism. This is the epistemological assumption of positivists. Researchers come in as objective observers to study phenomena that exist independently of them, and they do not affect or disturb what is being observed. They will use language and symbols to describe phenomena in their real form, as they exist without any interference whatsoever. Reductionism in character because by maintaining that less measurable sciences are reducible to more measurable ones. For instance, sociology is reducible to psychology. Sociology is reducible to psychology, while psychology is reducible to biology, and biology is reducible to chemistry, that is reductionism. And chemistry is reducible to physics. Social sciences can therefore be value-free and objective. There are three types of reductionism. We have ontological reductionism, methodological reductionism, and theory reductionism. If you want to know more and learn about reductionism, I will put the source in the description. Positivists believe that there are laws governing social phenomena. And by applying the scientific method, it is possible to formulate these laws and present them through a factual statement. But many scholars have criticized the positivist approach. While objective and scientific methods are appropriate for studying natural objects, they are not as successful when they are applied on social phenomena. The complexity of laws governing individuals, their idiosyncrasies, their relationship with each other, with intuitions and with society are in stark contrast with the order and regularity one finds in the natural world. The epistemological position of interpretivists is subjectivism. External reality cannot be directly accessible to observers without being contaminated by their worldviews, concepts, backgrounds, etc. As Flick states, perception, oops, wrong spelling, perception is seen not as passive receptive process of representation, but as an active constructive process of production. Individuals interact with other individuals and society and ascribe meaning and names to different social phenomena. According to Greeks, the researchers are inextricably part of the social reality that is being researched, that is, they are not detached. They are not detached from the subject they are studying. In the case of different well-argued interpretations about one phenomena, one interpretation is not chosen or preferred over others as the correct one, but the existence of multiple knowledges is accepted with the acknowledgement that different researchers bring different perspectives to the same issue. In contrast with positivism, which holds that social phenomena are governed by laws, immutable laws, the goal of interpretive research is not to discover universal context and value-free knowledge and truth, but to try to understand the interpretations of individuals about the social phenomena they interact with. You have to understand the interpretations of individuals about the social phenomena. If one believes in multiple socially constructed realities, it follows then that these realities are approached from different angles by different people. The researcher encounters a world that is already interpreted and his or her job is to reveal this according to the meanings created by the humans rather than to discover universal laws. Therefore, there can be more than one perspective and interpretation of a given phenomenon. But there's also criticism about interpretive paradigm. 
it has been criticized for, among other things, being being soft, incapable of yielding theories that could be generalized to larger populations, and the involvement of the researcher with participants, which leads to lack of objectivity. Although positivist research has its merits, there are social phenomena that could be best investigated under the interpretive paradigm. Surveys, close-ended questionnaires, and lists of numbers alone are sometimes not the best option because they are not designed to explore the complexities and conundrums of the immensely complicated social world that we inhabit. As you can also notice, these are the ends of the spectrum of many research paradigms with many intermediate positions in between that hold the balance of the importance of objectivity and subjectivity in different degrees. Examples are the following. Post-positivism, modernism, post-postmodernism, critical realism, structuralism, postmodernism, pragmatism, feminism, and subjectivism. Just remember that this mode of inquiries have varying assumptions and which can be traced back to both positivism and constructivism, which are, of course, can be further attributed to materialism and idealism. That's the importance of philosophy. There's also another way in which research paradigms can be categorized. We have quantitative, qualitative, and mixed paradigm. The positivism being in the quantitative, the constructivism in the qualitative, and some of the intermediate paradigms like post-positivism, pragmatism, critical realism, and other middle grounders belong in the mixed, meaning these paradigms use both quantitative and qualitative methods. So this is the summary of the comparison between positivism and constructivism. The philosophical basis of positivist is that of realism, which holds that the world exists and is knowable as it is really. While on constructivist or relativist or interpretivist, their philosophical basis is that of idealism. The world exists, but different people construe in a very different ways. The role of research, if you are a positivist, is to discover universal laws and generalizations. While if you are a constructivist, your role is to reveal different interpretations of the world made by people. So this is the summary of the comparison of positivism and constructivism. If you are a positivist, your philosophical basis is that of realism, meaning you believe that the world exists and it is noble. If you are a constructivist, your philosophical basis is idealism. You believe that the world exists, but different people construe it in very different ways, meaning they make their own meanings. The role of research, if you are a positivist, is to discover universal laws and generalizations. While if you are a constructivist, the role of research is to reveal different interpretations of the world as made by the people. Your role as a positivist researcher is to be neutral. While if you are a constructivist, your role being a researcher is to be engaged in the process of the research. You cannot be detached from your subjects. The theoretical approach for positivism is rational, using inductive and scientific methods, and value-free data. Value-free data means that your data has no preconceptions, and it is something like pristine, meaning it is not context-dependent. The theoretical approach for constructivist is subjective using inductive methods and value-laden data. Value-laden data because the subjects have already preconceptions of social phenomena.
So these are the pillars of the underlying philosophical assumptions that are taught and still being debated in vast literature of social sciences like economics, history, political science, psychology. Because all these philosophical inquiries have one thing in common, and that is what is the true understanding of the state and behavior of the natural world, individuals, groups, and societies so that we can resolve societal issues and improve the social conditions. That's just pretty it. We always have been a, a problem solver. And there's also numerous disagreements because, you know, it's all because of ontological and, and epistemological reasons. As a researcher or a consumer of knowledge, we need to be aware of our biases, our assumptions, and our subjectivity as well. Because this will likely influence what to believe and the ways we do critical analysis of them. It also affects what types of phenomena we consider as quote-unquote knowledge. It's all rooted on your philosophical stances. That's all. Thank you for listening and let me know what you think.